the belt of debris, just real quick, that's out there. Is there something incredible to be discovered there? Again, we tend to focus on the planets and the moons, but it feels like there's probably a lot of stuff out there. And it probably, what is it? It's like a garbage collector from outside of the solar system, isn't it? Like, doesn't it protect from other objects that kind of fly in? And like what, it, it just feels like it's a cool, you know, you know when you like walk along the beach and look for stuff and like look for, it feels like that's, that kind of place where you can find cool, cool, weird things. It, or it, it, I guess in our conversation today, when we think about tools and what science is, is studying, is there something to be studied out there? Or we just don't have maybe the tools yet, or there's nothing to be found? There's, there's absolutely a lot to be found. So the material that's out there is remnant material from the formation of our solar system. It's, we don't think it comes from outside the solar system, at least mm -hmm. not most of it. Um, but there, there are so many fascinating objects out there. And I, I think what you've hit on is exactly right, that we just don't have the tools to study them in detail. Um, but we, we can look out there and we can see there are different species of, of ice on their surface that tells us about, uh, you know, the chemical composition of the disk that formed our solar system. Some of these objects are way brighter than they should be, meaning they have some kind of geological activity. People have hypothesized that some of these objects have subsurface oceans. You could even stretch your imagination and say some of those oceans could be habitable, um, but we can't get very detailed information about them because they're so far away. And so I think if any of those objects were in the inner solar system, it would be studied intently and would be very interesting. So would you be able to design a probe in that like very dense debris field, be able to like hop from one place to another? Is that just outside of the realm of, like how would you even de design devices or sensors that go out there and take pictures and and land. Do you have to land to truly understand a, a little piece of rock? Or can you understand it from remotely, like fly up close and remotely observe? You can learn quite a lot from just a flyby, and that's all we're currently capable of doing in the outer solar system. Um, the New Horizons mission is a recent example which flew by Pluto and then they had searched for another object that was out there in the Kuiper Belt, any object that was basically somewhere that they could deflect their trajectory to actually fly by. And so they did fly by another object out there in the Kuiper Belt and they take pictures and they do what they can do. And if you've seen the images from that mission of Pluto, you can see just how much detail we have compared to just the sort of reddish dot that we knew of before. Um, so you do get an amazing amount of information actually from just essentially a high speed flyby. It always makes me sad to think about flybys that we might be able to, f we might fly by a piece of rock, take a picture and think, oh, that looks pretty and cool and whatever. And that you could study certain like composition of the surface and so on, but it's actually teeming with life and we won't be able to see it at first and it's sad because you, you know like when you're on a desert island you wave your hands and the thing flies by and you're trying to get their attention and they probably do the same well in their own way bacteria probably right but and we we miss it i don't know if, some reason it makes me it's a it's the fomo it's fear of missing out <laughs> it makes me sad that there might be life out there and we don't we're not in touch with it we're not talking. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, a sad uh, pause, uh, Russian philosophical pause. Okay.